Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Good morning. 930 hour has arrived. The time of the regularly scheduled meeting of the 11 County Commissioners, uh, January 18th. Our, uh, the normal way of beginning our meetings is with a moment of silence. So if you'll join me, please, for that. Thank you. And if I would join me in the pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I refer you to those of you that are not uh, normally uh, in attendance at our meetings. Uh, refer to the bottom of the agenda. We just have some simple guidelines for uh, the uh, for, for protocol for our meeting. So we would appreciate if uh, all of you would cooperate in those efforts. This time, normally we call for public comment, but. Uh, many of you are here and are with folks that are already on the agenda later on. So we'll move to uh, Dave Wisnick from uh, Back at the Gap. Thank you. Good morning, Commissioners, ladies and gentlemen. Dave Wisnick from 14 to 10 Gap, giving the Back to the Gap update. As of the 16th January, we've had 35,662 troops trained on the gap this year so far. Um, in fact, our numbers are the way they're looking for what we have scheduled for the rest of the year will exceed the numbers we had last year. So we're very excited about that. And that's on the state's calendar versus our calendar? Yes, ma'am. So that's in there. Um, this weekend we sent off the headquarters and the headquarters battalion of the 28th division deployed. Uh, they are safely at their mobilization site in Fort Hood for we brought on to the active service the United States Army and then further deployed. Uh, so we certainly <laughs> wish them well. Next week, we will have approximately a little bit over 1,600 troops on the gap. Uh, following week, it'll start picking back up to, from the 5th through the 11th of February. We'll have over 4,000, so that's pretty steady state operations for this time of the year. We got our final numbers in for our hunting season. Uh, we killed or harvested a record number of deer this year. Over 315 deer were harvested out of the gap. Um, that's an important program for us. It cuts down on the incidence of Lyme disease, Rocky Mountain spotted fever, and deer and vehicle crashes. So um, we have that. Anybody that's ever interested in hunting at the gap uh, we have an automated system now to come and buy your permit, get the safety briefing. They can go to https backslash backslash big f-t-i-g dot isportsman.net. Uh, that will get you in there and tell you what the requirements are to come and hunt and recreate on Fort Indian Town Gap. I'm sure our close-in neighbors will be happy to note we have no big booming live fire activities on the gap for the month of January. February, I can't say that for, so we'll <laughs> announce that schedule as it comes up. Um, we really appreciate the commissioners coming out to our dedication of our groundbreaking of our train sports center, our new military construction project that's going to commence, although with this icy and snow weather. I don't think they're digging a lot of dirt today, so hopefully things will get thawed and we'll get them well on their way. Pending any of you all's questions, that's all I have for today. I have no questions, but uh, I do want to compliment you and, of course, uh, 
on the ceremony the other day, and uh, of course we <coughs> so we don't expect less from the armed forces, but it was a, a very nice uh, ceremony, very professionally done. So we were happy to join you. We were honored to have you all. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. <coughs> <coughs> All right, uh, we'll move on with the agenda then, and uh, I'll accept a motion to uh, approve the minutes. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes from our last uh, meeting as printed. All those in favor of approving the minutes indicate so by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The minutes are approved. And <coughs> our treasurer. Good morning. You want to just introduce yourself, Sally, since we have a lot of folks in attendance. Yes, Sally here, Lebanon County Treasurer. On your report, I don't know if your dates are correct or not. Uh, I know mine were incorrect when I went in to do this this morning. So if it doesn't say Thursday, January the 18th on it, oh, it does there. Okay. Maybe it was on another one then. Okay. Maybe it was correct. I know some of mine were wrong this Okay, we had receipts on January 16th and 17th of $1,229,530.45. That brought us to a total cash of $1,632,755.65. Our expenditures this week were $1,122,926.20. We had undistributed tax claim of $3,257. And 26 cents. So we have a cash balance of $506,572.19. Okay, any questions for the treasurer? I'll move to approve the report as submitted. I'll second the motion. All right, I have a motion and a second to approve the treasurer's report as presented. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Treasurer's report is accepted. Thank you, Sal. Good morning, ladies. What would you like to introduce yourself, please? Yes, your sister. Michelle, Mr. Stracker, who would you like to start this? Personnel transactions on the resignation determinations. Kyle Fink, full time correctional officer, resignation effective January 30th. Mark Keels, full time correctional officer, resignation effective January 4th. Daniel Marshall, probation officer 3, resignation effective February 2nd. I have a motion to accept those. Second. I have a motion and a second to accept the resignations and terminations as read. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So ordered. Under FMLA and leaves of absence, Nicole Levac, courts, 12 week of um, imposing <coughs> FMLA, effective January, or excuse me, returning January 9th. Tammy Sharp from the prison, returning from a leave of absence, effective January 17th. And Eduardo Cerruti from the prison, uh, paid and unpaid FMLA, effective 120. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve those leaves of absence. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Under changes of status, transfers, and promotions, we have Brianna Rainier. Promotion from a caseworker 1 at MHADEI to a caseworker 2 at the rate of $1,280.46 by weekly, effective January 29th. <coughs> Ashley Weber, promotion from caseworker 1 ICM at MHADEI to caseworker 2 ICM at the rate of $1,376.51 by weekly, effective January 29th. So moved. Second. No motion and a second to accept those uh, promotions and transfers. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So ordered. Under other transactions, President Judge Towalk in domestic relations would like to hire Angela Houck as an Im imaging clerk at the rate of $833.24 by weekly effective January 29th. <coughs> President Judge Towalk in domestic relations would like to hire Melinda Carter as a docket specialist at the rate of $833.24 by weekly effective January 29th. The district attorney would like to hire Catherine Hirons as a secretary fee at the rate of $901.33 by weekly effective January 29th. And the Patronitary Clerk of Courts would like to rehire Sharon Haldeman as a part-time court clerk 
at the rate of twelve dollars and three cents per hour effective January twenty second. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve those other transactions <coughs> as presented. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Mm -hmm. Aye. Opposed? So ordered. Moving on to salary board. Motion to approve all transactions previously read plus the following. Christina Rivera, incremental increase, telecommunicator and EMA to the rate of $16.57, effective January 28th. Jennifer Everly, incremental increase, telecommunicator and EMA to the rate of $16.57, effective January 28th. Sarah Smith, incremental increase, regular part-time correctional officer at the prison to the rate of $13.52, effective January 28th. And Kelly Young, incremental <coughs> increase, part-time correctional officer at the prison, to the rate of $14.79, effective January 14th. So moved. Oops, second. Sorry. All right, I have a motion and a second to approve those salary board changes. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So ordered. For mandated conference seminars, Stephanie Swisher from Children and Youth would like to attend the Managing the Impact of Traumatic Stress on the Child Welfare Professional and Mechanics Art. February 9th, mileage mills pulls reimbursement, six credits mandated by DHS. Taylor Steinsoy from Children and Youth would like to attend the court process in Mechanicsburg February 14th. Mileage mills tolls reimbursement, six credits mandated by DHS. Marie Hernandez and Aaron Moyer from Children and Youth would like to attend the Southern Drug School Companion Training in Mechanicsburg. February 22nd and 23rd, mileage mills tolls reimbursement, 12 credits mandated by DHS. Sharon Gassert and Anna Marquez from Children and Youth would like to attend the Strength-Based Solution-Focused Supervision Training in Mechanicsburg, February 13th, Mileage and Meals, Tolls Reimbursement, Six Credits, Mandate by DHS. Robert Gambler, Bailey Van <coughs> from Children and Youth would like to attend the Making Permanent Connections and Outcomes for Professional Development in Mechanicsburg, February 7th, Mileage and Meals, Tolls Reimbursement, Six Credits, Mandate by DHS. And Klein from the District Attorney's Office would like to attend the Juvenile Prosecutors Conference in Kettisburg, April 10th and 11th, $200 total registration fee with meals, parking, tolls, reimbursement, nine credits mandated by the PA CLE Board. Daniel Wright, Jennifer Brown from the District Attorney's Office Detective Bureau would like to attend the 2018 PA Traffic Safety Conference in State College, April 3rd through the 6th with lodging, mileage, meals, reimbursement, mandated by PennDOT. And Taylor Steinsnyder from Children and Youth was previously approved to attend a training that was that has now been rescheduled. It is the Out of Home Placement and Permanency Planning in Mechanicsburg, rescheduled for January 23rd, 24th, and 25th, with mileage, meals, tolls, reimbursement, 18 credits, mandated by DHS. Second. All right, I have a motion and a second to approve all of those mandated conference uh, attendance. Uh, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The mandated, mandated conferences are approved. And under requested, Carl Davies from Area Agency on Aging would like to attend the P4A PCA quarterly meeting in Harrisburg, March 13th and 14th. $80 registration fee with mileage reimbursement. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second to uh, approve that requested conference uh, to be attended by Carol Davies from uh, Area Agency on Aging. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So ordered. Kim Briggs from MHIDEI would like to attend the Social Work Month Education Series in Harrisburg on March 14th and the 28th. $120 total registration fee with mileage reimbursement. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve that requested conference. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So ordered. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Joe Allen, are you going to download this on YouTube? Yes. Good. Okay, I'll watch it tonight in the comfort of my own home. just a bit from the agenda in order to meet the uh, the announced uh, schedule. So uh, our county administrator, Jamie Wolgamuth, has some additional items that we'll uh, 
we normally do at the end of the meeting, but we'll do some of those now. Uh, first item I have is uh, for your consideration is the certification of county funds for the 2018 year uh, for farmland preservation. Department of Agriculture requires that you certify the amount of money that's available toward easement purchases for farmland preservation, and then they, uh, as a board, decide whether there are state funds to match those dollars, whether it be dollar for dollar or sometimes better. Um, this is due by the end of January. So for 2018, there are funds available in the amount of $214,778. Those consist of uh, a $50,000 allocation from the county's general fund, as well as uh, donations from municipalities of $99,400, private donations of $3,140, interest on the farmland preservation account of $1,578.49, Clean and green rollback penalties of 18,159. County Act 13 funds from the Marcella Shale program $42,500 for a total of $214,778. Well, there it says 29 in the front. It says zero, zero. It, it's 29, but the form that the Department of Ag has it rounds rounded. down enough. Yeah. Thank you. Any uh, comments uh, on the uh, clean and green uh, or on the uh, farmland preservation fund? I'm thrilled that we can put something aside. It's very important to preserve our land for future generations for farming and food production. Uh, I, I just think it's uh, worth noting uh, when we uh, initiated the clean and green program, we designated that the rollback uh, <coughs> interest uh, we go into clean and green, and we see that gradually increasing now. So I think that's uh, that's positive as well. All right. Uh, seeing no other comments, uh, do I have a motion to uh, accept the the report and the, the contribution of that those funds? So, second. All right. I have a motion and a second to approve the farmland preservation funding as presented. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? All right. The okay, next item I have is a enter into a farm lease with uh, Kenneth, Kenneth Rice Farm of 104 Fox Road. This was be, would be for the farming of the property located along 422 East and South of the Township, adjacent to the driver Center and uh, in, in back of the driver Center <coughs> and adjacent to the CTC School. This would be for the 2018 year and it would be for $1,200 payable in October. I'll move to approve the lease with Ken Rice to farm that land. Second motion. All right, I have a motion and a second to approve the farmland lease, uh, which the county uh, owns that that land that we're leasing it to a farmer to uh, to grow crops, and so we get uh, the lease paid by the farmer to the county. All those in favor of approving the lease as presented indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed. Leases approved. Yeah, I have two bids for uh, for property that are in the tax claim repository. The first being for a property at 41 Lebanon Valley Court. This was offered at tax sale for $1,506.57 on September 11 of 17 and did not sell. It was again offered at the judicial sale for an upset price of $957.76 and did not sell on December 11. So we have a bid from A. Hunter Property Management of Anvil, and the amount of their bid is $100. I'll make a motion to accept the bid of $100 um, from Charles and Brenda. Well, it's from A. Hunter Property Management. I'm sorry, from A. Hunter. It was their Charles and Brenda's um, property. Second motion. I have a motion and a second to accept that uh, sale. Uh, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We accept the hundred dollars. <throat> Next one is for uh, the second bid is for nine Twin Maples Park in Myerstown, and this is a property that was also offered at uh, tax sale for one thousand five thirty seven eighty nine on September eleventh, but did not sell. Again, offered at judicial sale for nine fifty seven seventy six on December eleventh, did not sell. 
And we have a bid from Pedro Minis of Richland for $1. I'm going to accept it. I have a motion and a second to accept that bid of one dollar. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So we're, should we indicate that they're both mobile homes? Yeah, they're mobile homes. At this point. These, are, these are of an age and condition where they aren't even lived in any longer and uh, just being abandoned. So It sounds unfortunate, but these are pretty routine for us, unfortunately. The mobile homes, they're kind of abandon them after a while and uh, it's hard to uh, difficult to recoup the, the taxes on them. So typically the park owner will buy it and uh, remove it and reuse the lot. Next I have appointments to the MHID EI Advisory Board. Uh, there's a recommendation to reappoint for another three year term Dr. Joseph Barber and Ms. Betty Beard. Also move that we appoint Dr. Joseph Barber and Ms. Betty Beard to the MHID EI Advisory Board. Second. All right, I have a motion and a second to make those two appointments to the board. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Appointments are approved. And also to accept the resignation of Charlotte Tumulty uh, of Lebanon, who is uh, no longer able to serve on the board. I have a motion and a second to accept that resignation. Mm -hmm. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So ordered. We have a request for exemption from real estate taxes for a disabled veteran, uh, Joseph A. LaFrance of 122 Bart Circle, Palmyra. I'll also move to exempt Joseph LaFrance from real estate taxes. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second to accept the Disabled veteran uh, exemption from real estate tax. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? <laughs> so ordered. Yeah. And the last item I have is a proclamation for uh, <coughs> retiring employee Deborah L. Spittler is retiring from the Office of Area Agency on Aging and um, has served the county for 27 years. She retired December 22nd of 2017 as a supervisor in that department. So we will uh, see that she gets this. Second. I have a motion and a second to uh, accept that, uh, res uh, that <coughs> honoring uh, the resignation and retirement with that proclamation. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The proclamation is approved. And as a reminder, you have eight assessment appeals this afternoon starting at 1.30. Thank you. <laughs> so we move to the back of the agenda at this point? Yep. And uh, if, uh, I, if it's my understanding is correct, uh, Teresa Wentling is on the agenda at this time uh, to talk to us about Cedar Bay. <laughs> Before I start, I just want to apologize. My voice, I'm recovering from some sickness. So are a lot of us. So. Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you want anyone to join you at these two seats? I may need some support. Yeah, you so. Thank you. Would you like to uh, just introduce everyone at the table and so we know who's here? I see this. I'm Tracy Lightman. Melissa Martin. Go ahead. I want to thank you for this opportunity. My name is Teresa Lennon. My husband of 40 years, Michael, has been at Cedar Haven Healthcare Center since February 2016. Cedar Haven Healthcare implies they provide health care, maintenance, and improvement of physical and mental health. On Cedar Haven Healthcare's website, it states we provide personalized patient care. Mike has had two strikes and now has a lesion on his brain that causes misfires. On a good day, he can sit up and feed himself, not as you and I would feed ourselves, but he can manage to get his pureed food to his mouth. On a bad day, he is leaning to the right and drooling. Mike is on honey thickened liquids, that is liquids the consistency of honey, to prevent him from choking. Mike has been given regular li liquids on several occasions. January 25, I am not sure why I'm once again reporting that Mike is given regular water with his meds. Cedar Haven Healthcare's response to my grievance 
about water given to Mike is a sticky note at the nurse's station on one app stating Mike Wentling is on honey thickened liquids. When residents like Mike are given regular liquids instead of thickened liquids, not only can they choke, but they will aspirate and possibly get pneumonia. Mike is not the only one at Cedar Haven Healthcare on thickened liquids. No one at Cedar Haven Healthcare on thickened liquids is safe. I can't be at Cedar Haven Healthcare 24-7 to make sure Mike is not given regular liquids. I still work full time, but go almost every day after work to feed him and visit with the other residents in the dining room of 1F, and I stay until Mike is in head. I've gotten to know some of the other residents. G likes the curtain closed when it's dark outside. J likes to talk, but he has trouble getting his words out. B has to be talked into eating his chopped up food. All B's food comes chopped up and in small pieces. But if he gets the wrong tray with regular food on it, he is not safe. No one at Cedar Haven Healthcare that needs special chopped up or parade food is safe if the wrong tray is given. If meds are placed between two mentally deficient residents and I am the only one supervising who is taking those meds, no one at Cedar Haven Healthcare is safe. I am not on the payroll at Cedar Haven Healthcare. If I visit my husband on a Saturday between two and nine and no meds are given, but I know my husband gets meds, breakfast, lunch, supper, and midnight. I question if anyone on meds at Cedar Haven Healthcare is safe. If I walk into my husband's room to find three cups of unattended meds on the counter, no one at Cedar Haven Healthcare is safe. I'm not on the payroll at Cedar Haven Healthcare. But in August, Mike's hair is almost as long as mine and he has a major issue with lead-related scalp psoriasis. So I'm cutting his hair and scrubbing his head. His next haircut will be in November by me because once again his hair is almost as long as mine and he is having major itching from the lead-related head psoriasis. I have cleaned my husband's room and bedding because all of the residents, including Mike, deserve a clean room and bedding that is not soiled from the day before. I have cleaned the dining room table because the residents deserve to eat at a clean table. Last March, Mike's dentures were lost or misplaced. July, I am still fighting for Mike's dentures to be replaced. In November, Mike finally got his new dentures. So you can imagine how upsetting it is to go to visit my husband and see his new dentures in a plastic water cup sitting on the edge of the counter and not safe in the container for his dentures. These are the dentures I fought Cedar Haven Healthcare for seven months for. <laughs> October 21, I'm in a panic watching Cedar Haven Healthcare struggle to secure Mike in the Hoyer lift. His head is now on the seat of his chair because Cedar Haven Healthcare has failed to educate their staff. Mike will be hit in the head several times in the next four weeks by the pole in the center of the Hoyer lift. His head is now bloody from, from October 21 to November 18. I'm having the same conversation with the nursing supervisor about the proper placement of a use lane. It is to be placed under the arms, not over the shoulders. No one needing a Hoyer lift at Cedar Haven Healthcare is safe. November 3rd, Mike is sitting in his poop and then not cleaned properly. His soiled brief is placed on his wheelchair, now contaminating the seat where he sits every day. It is 9.49 p.m. I feel so bad for Mike's roommate, H.M. He is still waiting for someone to assist him. November 4, Mike had a seizure. I question if he is getting his meds. November 5, Mike's pants are saturated. I question when he was cleaned last. November 6, Mike's room is disgustingly dirty and his bed is soiled. November 12 at 9 a.m., they are putting Mike back to bed. He is out of it. I question if he got his meds. I'm here 9.30 to 2, no meds are given. At 5, Mike is awake. I ask them to get him out of bed so he can eat supper. <laughs> November 28, I'm packing up JS personal items. It is a day, sad day for Mike and I. We. JS is leaving tomorrow, and I am so happy he is getting out of Cedar Haven Healthcare. <coughs> JS knew one day 
he had been given the wrong meds. He had looked after his roommates in 105, especially Mike, buzzing them when they needed assistance and making sure Mike's TV had football games on. I will be forever grateful to him for watching over Mike. December 3rd, 8.45 p.m. I am looking for someone to put Mike to bed. Cedar Haven Healthcare is not where Mike is not in bed. No one in Mike's area has been cleaned or put to bed. January 15, 2018. I have been sick since Friday and not been able to go to Cedar Haven Healthcare. I'm wondering if anyone is feeding Mike. I send Linda a text if Mike is okay. This is her response. Saturday night, Pat, Linda's sister, fed Mike because the eggs disappeared. Sunday night, John, Linda's husband, fed Mike because no one was there to assist. Pat, John, and Linda are not on the payroll at healthcare, at Cedar Haven Healthcare. Mike is listed as a feed. He needs supervision when eating. No one at Cedar Haven Healthcare who is listed as a feed is safe unless you are lucky enough to have three angels named John, Linda, and Pat who are just there to visit their dad but are giving personalized patient care and you're watching over the residents in the dining room of 1F. As I wrote this through my tears <coughs> on January 15th, I thought that would be all I had to say. But I have one more entry in my journal. It's last night, Wednesday, January 17th. I went to visit and feed Mike after work. It is not a good day. Mike is having trouble swallowing his parade food. The nurse is here to give Mike his meds. Three small cups of regular liquid meds. I suggested to the nurse that Mike is on honey thickened liquids and his meds should be thickened. I cannot be at Cedar Haven Healthcare 24 7 to make sure Mike is not given li regular liquids. No one at Cedar Haven Healthcare on thickened liquids is safe. My husband of 40 years is not safe at Cedar Haven Healthcare. Before I leave Cedar Haven Healthcare, I once again have words with the head nursing supervisor. I want it documented <coughs> that your nursing staff once again tried to give my husband regular liquids. What can I do to fix this? I request Mike be checked to make sure his lungs are clear. I agree to a chest x-ray if necessary. This is not the first, second, third, or fourth time I have had this very conversation. But I want you to know, on October 20th, 2017, it was a Friday, the first day of the strike, and also the first day that I had the conversation about my husband and the nursing staff giving him regular liquids. See your even healthcare website states personalized patient care. One last thing, all of Mike's pensions, his social security <coughs> that he has worked for so hard all of his life goes to Cedar Haven Healthcare so Mike can have personalized patient care. Mike is also covered under my insurance, Medicare, and Medicaid. Thank you. Thank you. Can I ask you one question? Sure. Is he private pay or are you not comfortable asking that, answering that? I am paying. Okay, so all of his pensions, all of his social security, my insurance gets billed, Medicare gets billed, Medicaid gets billed in that order. All of his pensions, all of his social security goes to the CIA. Thank you. The other two ladies that have anything you have to say. Yes. Hi, uh, my name is Sue Wright, and I have a brother that has been living at Sea Raven for the last um, the quality of care is heartbreaking to say the least. Um, he 
One of them is he needs restorative therapy, and since the beginning of this strike, he has not gotten it. Um, he's losing the strength in his knees, and I started with him on the fifth week to try and get him to go up and down his steps so I can take him away. If I'm not there, it doesn't get done. And that's sad. They did start having it a couple of weeks ago, but two people is not enough for the floors. Um, it, it involves nursing, assisting him to walk and do the steps so many times. When I started with him, he could only go up one, three steps, and he had to stop. That was it. Uh, and it's in his care plan. Um, and that's been since the beginning. Also, several times over the last few months, when I walk into his room, around 7.30 in the morning, trays are giving out for breakfast, and most times I will take my tray to my brother so it's warm. And um, the guy, the resident of the side of him, there's always a toilet there that is filled from the night before. Sometimes he goes in the morning, and it's still there. But the other morning, he sat on that potty full and ate his breakfast. And that toilet, it smells. You know, you leave it in the night before and with the medicine that people are taking, sometimes the odor is terrible. Also, um, they get a bath once a week. <clears throat> you know, that's the way most nursing homes are, but my brother was given a bath a week ago Monday. Okay, so this last Monday, however, he was supposed to have a bath. Never came. I had to call in as of Thursday. Now, they've been sick in there. They've been quarantined. He didn't have his bedding done for over a week and a half, and I had to call to get him a bath. Somehow he got lost in the system. That's not good. Um, it isn't sanitary. It sometimes smells in his room. It's, it's just awful. And, and the same thing with, with the hair. You know, it might not be a medical condition, but waiting almost 11 weeks for the first time they had the haircut, and not everybody got it done. It's all that a part-time girl could do. Uh, then she quit. Um, the women, the pride that they have always taken in their lives to have their hair done to look good, and men too. There they are, getting their hair washed. They had a perm, it's just sticking everywhere. How can they be proud of themselves? You know, they don't have much. All their money is gone. They get 45 a week. The money is gone. And what they have to do is sit with other residents, talk, have a good time, have some crafts, and they sit there with their hair not done. They don't get a break in the afternoon. It's like they're in a prison. They don't even get an afternoon snack. It's pretty pathetic. Um, it does mean a lot for the grooming. It means an awful lot to them. The people on strike are like family to this residence. They have known the residents for many years. Without these experienced folks from our community caring for my brother plus all the residents there, Cedar Haven is not the same. <clears throat> the county commission needs to get involved because these are the people you represent. And this place will never go back to being what it was if they get replaced. One thing I want to say is when these people get sick, in all these years, those people working in Cedar Haven are more of a family than any one of us could ever be. We go in, we spend so many hours, but we leave. They depend on them. For my brother, it was a lot of trust. It took almost a year for him to start trusting people. Does he trust them now? No. Will he tell when something's wrong? Only if he can't take it anymore. Is mentally retarded, so it does take him a little bit of time. So it, that was a hard thing for trust. But it's just not the same. You know, when these people get sick, those nurses and CNAs will do anything for those. And with this quarantine time of them having a diarrhea, the throw up, it would have been nice to have people who know. They don't. You know, one day it's from Arkansas, one day it's from Delaware, one day it's, it's another company that is in there. I know they're, they're doing what they think is okay, and we've always had nursing come in if we were short, like on a weekend they would have but a lot of our regulars were there. And I just think that um, everybody should look in and see Cedar Haven just isn't what it was. And they're at a standstill. Out of 35 
nursing homes between here and Lancaster, there are only three that will take Medicare and Medicaid. Where are the residents going to go? That's what they have. They just can't take up because they have no money. They're stuck. It's like a prison. So he is not private pay. The majority are not. But your brother specifically is not private pay. Right. So there's no if he was if he could pay for himself, I could take him somewhere. But no, I can't. That's all. Yes, please, um, and thank you for the opportunity. Um, my aunt, my great aunt, has been um, a resident of Cedar Haven for four years now. Um, she's been a resident of Lebanon County her entire life. She will be 90 in April. Um, there, she's one of the residents that I would say, even though she has no filter, she uh, is is very, um, very well oriented. Still has a, her mind. Still makes her own decisions. Um, so medications, she's used to the medications that she gets on a regular basis every day, morning, noon, night, she knows what they are. Um, we've had incidents where, um, similar to Teresa, medications weren't being given. Um, the wrong medications were being given. Not enough medication was being given. My fear here is Viv is able to make decisions for herself. She's of sound mind. What's happening with her neighbor who can't, who cannot speak for herself, who cannot make those decisions? What's happening to them? Are they getting the wrong meds? Um, it's, it, it just it blows my mind. I'm, I'm actually very grateful that her mind is still there so that she can speak up not only for herself but others. Um, she is the president of the Residence Council and takes that job very seriously. Um, so I am here as her voice but also for the other residents who can't speak for themselves. Um, she has uh, diabetes, CHF, um, a num number of other contributing factors. Um, one of the things the doctor prescribed is boots. They go on her lower legs and it um, is to help with the edema in her legs and, and the fluid buildup. Um, there were four days, five days straight when she came back from the hospital in December that those boots were not put on her legs. And this is the result of those boots not being put on her legs. She had very, very little independence, but she promoted herself around the nursing home. She can't do that when her feet are so swollen, she can't get shoes on. and Teresa, there's continued issues with personal care surrounding bathroom use. When she came back from the hospital, she was required to stay in the bed. She got bed rest for a couple days. So she had to use the bed pan. She called and called for the bed pan, sat for over an hour waiting for someone to come so she could go to the bathroom. She ultimately couldn't wait any longer. And she ended up soiling herself. She was utterly embarrassed worried about the smell and how others would see her. And I felt so horrible that there was nothing I could do about it. I can complain and complain and complain and no one's doing anything about it. Last week, she wears a brief, a brief to, to bed. And last night, uh, well, I'm sorry, last week, um, on during third shift, around midnight, she had called and said she needed to be changed. She had, had um, urinated in her brief and needed to be changed. 6 a.m. the following morning, she was still waiting her cage. So six hours, she sat and waited. Personal care, again, just adding to what they've already said, for four weeks, she went without a shower, without a bath, without having her hair washed. Her hair was itching. I don't know about you, but I get a shower every day, at least once a day. I don't know how anyone can't allow that to happen to someone, not give them that care. What if it was your uncle, your aunt, your mom, your dad, your mother or sister? What would you do? And this is just, it's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. 
I can't stand around and watch it anymore. That's why we're here. Something has got to change. And is he private pay? No. She's not. She's not trying to pay. We would have nowhere to take her either. I ultimately have to bring her home. No, but the reason I ask is um, have you considered reporting these things to the state? This is the first time I've heard all of this um, so succinctly and passionately, and I just wondered if it has been reported, if these are incidents that you have. You have a journal. I mean, the documentation <coughs> is fantastic. And has it been reported? I have called the state. I have been on with the state. I complained about the toilet. I complained about on the 3F floor. There were 11 people who could not feed themselves. Now, by law, they tell you that you only need one CNA per 20 residents. That's okay, but there are exceptions, and you have 11 people or whatever that need to be fed that have no oxygen. I complained about the hair. Well, I'm not really worried about the hair right now. We'll see what we can do. He comes in at 8 o'clock in the morning after they're fed. There was so many up there. They hadn't been alerted to it because that's not the first time this has happened. They had, the state had to be alerted that... Uh, or they were telling us, they called in there to tell them that they are coming. When they came, the speech therapist was there, they had other CNAs they were helping to feed. That's not the way it is. It just isn't. But um, I, I took the liberty of calling. And have you submitted anything in writing? No, I talked, I talked right to the man who was supposed to send me a letter of what he found. He never did. But he was in there. Yes. The Department of Health. Is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I did it for the food too because my brother was almost ate raw chicken. If it wouldn't have been for her aunt, imagine how sick he would have gotten. So it's it is bad. Um, I know how we, much all of you care about these folks. It must be so difficult for you to stand by and see all this happening. And so I, you know. Again, as Joellen said, this is the first time we're hearing these stories, and I'm glad that you're reporting them uh, to, to the this right is, people. Yeah. It's I would just been there. I, I would say that um, I think your documentation is wonderful, and it should be put in writing to the state um, so that they have something in hand to go in with. Talking is wonderful in person. I mean, on the phone, but. You need a, a paper trail, in my humble opinion, because that way they can enforce a little easier because they have something to fall back on what they're looking for. The state or if is, it re not, is repeated. The state is not very happy to work fast. Um, there have been <coughs> numerous calls to the state, and they're supposed to check that out right away. They take their time. And I don't even think writing to them, that's pushed push aside there. We're not the only ones that have complained. We're not the only ones that walk out of there that are ready to throw up. And that's, that's true. You see pee on the wall? That should be clean for three days? It gets... When my brother got changed at night time, because he peed, they took the diaper inside his lounge pants with the pad, put it on his bed, and he slept like that the rest of the night. I try and smile, you know Tommy. I try and smile with him. He's antsy. Him do anything. They don't take him out and run out to, to shop for Christmas. It's a prison. Well, um, these presentations, um, I, I presume you knew when you came in, will be published. Uh, the county has a, a long tape and individually. I hope that my camera uh, has not failed and we'll post those as well. We have uh, Gordon Wise here from WLBR. So I think that um, you can also utilize those uh, links to be able to communicate to the state what's going on. And I would gladly forward them as well on your behalf because I think it's important they know what's going on. Yeah, I think it's important that uh make the, the, the kind of concentrated effort that you're making here today
to inform the folks at the state that uh, that these uh, things are happening because they are the agency that would enforce that. We obviously uh, we're happy to uh, be here for you and listen, but we do not have any enforcement power in this board over uh, Cedar Haven or any other nursing home in the county. So your your main emphasis, I think, needs to be to the Department of Health to get uh, to have them enforce uh, things that are not being done. Call from the county yourselves to the state would make a difference all you have heard because there's something well that's that's certainly uh something that is a possibility you're here. much higher than we are when we're uh, when when uh when we've concluded here uh, this morning i think we'll uh, uh, try to to uh, join together at the three commissioners to make some kind of an effort to uh, to help correct the matter but I, I really, and you know, I, I don't think our position is going to have a huge impact on the Department of Health. I think, I think you folks uh, need to make uh, these things as clearly known to them as you are making them known to us. I think that's an important piece. <laughs> All right, uh, the three of you have anything else uh, to add at this point? Okay. Then uh, I think we have some representatives from uh, the union uh, with Ask Me, uh, particularly someone from uh, National uh, Headquarters and also uh, Penny Kleinfelter from the local uh, <coughs> folks who want to come forward. <coughs> <laughs> My name is Penny Kleinfelder. I'm the president of our local union at Cedar Haven. I'm Danielle Kohler. I'm also on the board of the union for Cedar Haven. Um, I, I want to start out with the comment that you had just made about after this is all over, you'll try to discuss what you can do. You won't try to discuss what you will do. You need to step in and do something. After all, 2014, you created this monster. I don't think you realized who you were selling it to, the nursing home. You thought, from my understanding, that it was CHR, which was the company's initials that you were selling it to, and that's in fact not even who you were selling it to. It took members like us who have <coughs> no experience in politics, we have no experience in investigating, we have no experience in anything but nursing. And it took us to find out exactly, looking up who purchased Cedar Haven. And if you would have looked, been looked into, you would have saw who purchased it. It was a gentleman who had a company that purchases nursing homes. He drives them into the ground, sells them, and then you know what? He don't buy another nursing home in the same company name. He sells it. He starts a new company with a new name. So you can't, it's not as easy to track, but we found it. I think that should have been taken care of way back then and we wouldn't be in this situation. The residents would be in the situation they're in. Just so you know, the gentleman that owns Cedar Haven now, which is Stone Barn Holdings, as the company has, it's going south, as you all know. Well, guess what? He already started a new company, Wind River Investments or Wind River Holdings, and he's putting bids on other nursing homes. I'm not sure if you get calls from other counties who want to sell nursing homes and are looking to for uh, words of wisdom uh, or words to tell them who or, or references, basically. If you're look, if they're looking for references from this gentleman who owns Stone Bar Holdings. His name is Chaz B. Blaylock. You, you see what's going on. I know you. this is the first time we've sat down and talked to you, but you've seen it in the news, you've heard it on the radio. It's not a good situation. And I don't feel he should be getting references to purchase other nursing homes 
from other counties who are going to end up in the same dilemma that we're in. Um, I don't know if I can give you each a card. Would that be all right? When we decided we wanted to come to this meeting today, we wanted to show you that this is not just us. These are families, employees, and many other people that have no nothing to do. They don't have residents that live at Cedar Haven. They don't have family there. They don't have employees that work there. These are just regular citizens who are your constituents who feel Cedar Haven is going through a crisis and they need help from you. And I know that you are going to say, there's, oh, there's nothing we can do. It's not in our hands anymore. But I don't believe that. How did you know that that's what we would say? Well, because I, because yeah. I hear things I, that I'm, come. I'm keeping an open mind trying to find out what you're asking of us and trying to work with. OK. You. So no, I don't assume that. All right, I, I apologize. I won't assume. But there's got to be something that can be done mm -hmm. to bring this man back to the table to negotiate, which he refuses to do, and to stop him from, excuse the language, raping the employees of Cedar Haven, because that's what he's doing. We're, like I said, we are not the only ones who feel that way, the employees and the staff, because These are all signed by Lebanon County residents who are all voters. There are over 1,260 cards that have been filled out in just a two week period when we decided to come here. And we thought, you know what? We need to get, we need to show them that it's not only us. So I just feel that something needs to be done. You can step in and do something. Um, I was under the impression that when the sale was first when it was first done, part of the agreement was that CHR would run the facility. I was under the impression that that was part of the agreement in that sale. Well, after a year, Mr. Blaylock booted him out, and they are not running the facility. It is Stone Barn that's running the facility. He's taking like three million dollars since he's bought the place that he would have made in profits and he's sending it to his other companies and he's calling them management fees that would have been a profit if he wouldn't have sent them to other companies three million dollar profit i'm not talking about a little bit of money so i'm going to give you to danielle All right, my name is Danielle Kohler. I was born here in Lebanon County, raised here all my life. Um, I've been an employee at Cedar Haven for almost 18 years. Uh, I started off there as a CNA, and then I went and got my LPN degree in 2004. Um, I decided to take a job at Cedar Haven and then stay there for 18 years because I care about the people there. The residents are like family to me. I don't just know their medical needs. I know their stories, their jokes, their heartbreaks and their joys. I think we all deserve such care. So I am here today as a striker, but also as someone who has a personal stake in what happens to the residents at Cedar Haven. In fact, my, for the last two years, my aunt, Marianne Oblinsky, has been a resident at Cedar Haven. My aunt has cerebral palsy. She is unable to walk and she cannot take care of herself. Mr. Blaylock, the owner, is trying to tear apart the family that has made Cedar Haven a five-star facility. He is doing this by provoking a strike. The Labor Board has informed us that Mr. Blaylock's company violated federal law, labor laws and that they intend to take our unfair labor practice charges to complain. He is also doing this by cutting costs of patient care while increasing what he spends on management services. Since taking over Cedar Haven, Mr. Blaylock made sure his out-of-state management company took $2.8 million in fees. Meanwhile, he has asked us, the people who deliver the care at Cedar Haven, to take severe cuts to health care and pay time off. 
We do not think our elected representatives should sit by and let the owner of Cedar Haven destroy 300 good jobs in London County. If you care about our vote, about your voters, the people who live at Cedar Haven, and the folks like me who spend their careers there, you will find a way to get involved and protect our jobs and our families. No, he's not coming. Is there someone from uh, the National Union here? International? Well, whatever. There, there is. Is somebody going to speak, Meredith? I mean, I, I'm staff of the International Union, but I wasn't planning on speaking. Okay. Uh, I just want to give you. I just say. Okay. I just have one. I want one more thing to say. Just an example. I want to give you an, my example of me at Cedar Haven. When, when count, the county owned Cedar Haven, I had received 26 personal days a year, okay? And I understand that's a little above and beyond what a lot of people do get. But in 2014, when Cedar Haven sold to Mr. Blaylock, the first year <coughs> the HR ran us, they were the management of Cedar Haven, Nothing had changed there. That kind of stayed the same. We had a 2% wage increase, I believe it was that year. 2% wage increase that year. All of our other things stayed the same. The following year, when he no longer wanted CHR to run the facility and he took over, that year, which was last year, I myself lost 60, or no, wait. I myself lost two personal days, two vacation days, two sick days, and two holidays. That's eight days. Oh yeah, four Two personal days. You're right. So I went. I went to drop down, and I am now current. Was currently getting 20 personal days a year. With this new contract that he implemented, I was getting 20 personal days. 12. It was 12 vacation days and eight sick days which is a total of 20. His new contract that he implemented, even though it was voted down, gives me, and I've been there seven or 11 years, I'm going on 11. His new number for me, personal, vacation, and sick time all together is seven. I will be getting seven vacation days, personal days a year. Earned every quarter. Yeah. You only get so many Yeah, you only get it earned. So right now I have like two and a half days. So if I save them up, maybe by the end of the year I could go on vacation. Granted, I don't get sick the rest of the year. That comes with no wage increase. And that comes with tripling my health insurance, which we're through Blue Cross and his Blue Cross that he has for us, his did not go up in price. He's putting less towards our health insurance, which is what tripled our health insurance. It's not because health insurance went up. A lot of people say, well, health insurance is going up everywhere. That's, that was not the case in this situation. Um, I, I saw one of Joellen's videos, thank God you do that, of one of your meetings when, Mr. Phillips, you had said, oh, since the sale of Cedar Haven, everything's so wonderful. This nursing staff is making so much more money. And I couldn't tell you everything you said. I know I, I watched it several times, but you had said how, how everything was going very well at Cedar Haven. That the nursing oh. staff had gotten a pay increase and everything else. I want to just enlighten you a little bit about that pay increase. The pay increase that we got when he took everyone up, he took CNAs up to $15 an hour and he took LPMs up to 22 an hour. Nursing staff that have been there for 30 years, 30 plus years, they dedicated their life to Cedar Haven and the residents that live there. We have several members who, one in particular who is an LPM, she has been up there over 30 years. When they brought everyone up to $22 an hour, that gave her a three cent raise. She was making 
$21.97 That's me. Exactly. She knows exactly what I'm talking about. That gave her a three cent raise. Later, when raises came out where he wanted to give everyone a 50 cent raise, that was only for anyone who did not qualify under the going up for the CNA or the LPN status to going up. So her three percent raise, her three cent raise was her only raise she got last year. And this year she gets none. Well, my, that's where we're in the prison next door in Renovo, we're sort of tuned into the salary competition and we, we were at sixteen eighty three an hour for our LPNs and we just went to twenty dollars because of Cedar Haven being at twenty two and how difficult it is for us to attract uh, so that's that's quite a jump from 1683 to 22 and when you said a 2% raise I was like well gee that's not what I understood the LPNs got uh, more than 2% uh, that was the first contract after that yeah, yeah the so, first contract but still quite the a the second week. contract but that is for the ones that came that are just coming in and so have, my LPN that, that just jumped up that three cents to make $22 an hour yes. is making the exact same money as somebody who's just hired off the street yes. and she's been there for school. over 30 okay. years I, I, I'm understanding it better, but that's still right for us to be competing uh, next door is, is where I was uh, what I was referring to. And the other thing I was well, this is all I have to go on is that you went Cedarine went from four star to five star in terms of the evaluation, and I thought that indicated uh, the quality of care had uh, been very good. So that's those were I was basing my remarks on. Right. 1683 to 22 dollars and the fact that you went from four star to five star when it was under the county so I mean those those were from one you know what I was referring well, Cedar Haven is a five-star facility but the people that are in this room are what makes Cedar Haven a five-star facility yeah, and that, right actually here. that that's that's taken into effect every year they go back over the year to decide what star you are and with everything that's happened there now, I guarantee when that happens next year, it will no longer be a five-star. Yeah. So. The other thing is, with your employees over at the prison, do they pay for their health insurance? No. No. See, we're, we might be getting a couple more books an hour, but, but we're, we're paying a yeah. ridiculous amount of yeah. money. Plus, we know what that we know. We all know what the county benefits were like. I and paid for my husband's insurance. I'm the one who just got the three cents an hour raise. So I really got to watch where I spend that money. Um, my health insurance is sixteen thirty two a month with the five thousand dollar deductible. Per person. Per person. Yeah. And I've worked there half my life. The CNAs or the LPNs over at the jail don't do half. Of what they do at Cedar Haven. I'm not. I'm not you know, disputing. Right. I'm just no, saying right. the numbers needed. We needed to right. bring ours up because of yeah. the competition in the marketplace and all the vacancies around um, Lebanon County and the LPN area. We we had realized that we weren't competitive. But we understood. The point is, we understood that we made less money when we were county owned, but it was worth it because of the benefits. Yes. So it, it made it all worth it. This gentleman is giving is under the impression that if he gives us a couple more dollars an hour, we get so much less in benefits that at the end of the day, I might be making that much more an hour, but I'm bringing home less an hour. I'm bringing my paycheck is less now than it was not ten years ago when I started, and that it's it's not right that that we seem to be going backwards. And you know, we just we need we need you need to step in and help us do something. And not just for, for the staff, but for yeah, the residents. For the residents. For the residents. <clears throat> Absolutely. I mean, these poor the residents. residents. I, I appreciate members. these family members who came today and spoke on their family's behalf, and that is wonderful. But what about all those residents in there who don't have family? Because we were their family. That's right. And they have no voice to speak about That's what's what going said. on or what's happening to them. That's what I said. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it must be very difficult for you to stand by and allow all that to it's happen. It's very difficult. Walking out that day was very difficult. It's not something we wanted to do. I just have to say I'm really sad to hear all of this today. Um, 
supporting you is extremely important because you're still family even though you're no longer working for the county. Um, I've done it in my own small ways, but uh, I certainly will write to the state and I'm with the commissioners. If we do a joint, that would be wonderful. But I do have a question. I think you said about um, physical therapy that your brother, brother wasn't getting. Do they no longer have a physical therapy department? Oh, that yes. was our that was that's physical what brought therapy. in the most money for us. That this was fun. restorative. This is done by AIDS, okay, where they will help somebody get up and maybe walk down the hall. They need to get exercise, those that can still walk. Okay, so for almost 11 weeks, they had nobody on the Then they had two. I mean, I complained all that time, and after the fifth weekend, I saw, saw my brother alone where his knees were getting stiff, because um, I take him away, I see, and I started him going up and down the steps at the, in the I heard room. you say that, and I was just wondering. And then they started getting, they have two people, as a, that's all I know so far. You can't do all the residents in there that could <clears throat> walk a little bit. What it is, after they're back with physical therapy, they're done, <clears throat> then they go to the restorative program. That's when we go on the floors and walk them, right. exercise them, or what they need. It's what therapy tells us to do then. Right. So the nurses are supposed to supplement what physical therapy does. Is that what you're telling yes. me? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Now I understand. Yes. Yeah, they, do, they do get a reimbursement for that. Yeah. And if it's part of the care plan, it yeah. must be done in order for them to get reimbursement, and I'm not gonna make any accusation, but I would bet money that if she went to look at her brother's files that it would probably probably state that he had this, he had this restored it so that they could get their money. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So I, I would. Not only the restorative therapy, but their baths. Yeah. They are all checked off that it was done. Like the day they didn't know Mike was in bed, it was checked off that Mike was in bed, but Mike was not in bed. Do you, like, with your cell phone, take pictures of those records so you have a file of your own? No. They can't they get to those. Can't. It's on, no, we it's on computers now. So, yeah. <laughs> as well as she, she can't get to see if there's documentation on those boots. They could medical records. They are all on the computer now, though. But we should be able to see them. No, family, 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 and the only reason I say that is because the flustered aide mentioned to me that so-and-so was marked he had a bath, but we all know he didn't. And, and that's the only, that's all hearsay to me. Like, I have pictures of unattended meds. I don't have pictures of records. I asked for my husband's med records when he got his medication, and it looks to me like he got his meds. But if I'm there and I didn't see him get his meds, like, where are those meds? Well, that's that's insurance fraud, Medicare fraud. So yes. I, mean, <coughs> that that I can't. Well, I can't. Well, I'm just saying if that's accurate, that that's what they, that's what he's, or that's what's happening. Yeah. I mean, you understand though, like part of the problem is if we're not there and don't, right? If people aren't there to witness it, like. Part, like part of the recourse of the DOH and of the ombudsman is to go in and interview the resident. And if the resident is not, you know, lucid or verbal, like that's not right. And so for a while, the gentleman that uh, Teresa spoke about, who was his own power of attorney, was next to her husband. And, he, and so he was documenting, right? And he actually sent a letter to the Department of Health to area hospitals to a whole bunch of people saying you know this is what happened to me and this is what happened to the person next to me right um, because he has you know the ability to do that right um, but so that's part of the sort of frustration in filing sort of routine complaints is that the follow-up is to then go in and interview people like there's not a lot of ways of documenting some of this stuff that's 
kind of happening on an ongoing basis. And then, it, and it becomes a uh, he said, she said sort of thing. Yeah. I said this person didn't get their medicine, and they they come two days later, but they have no way of knowing if they really, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So they have no way of knowing that. But for some reason, they do get a heads up when they're coming, because all yes. of a sudden, when they're coming, there's all these people here. Mm -hmm. This is a, a private company, but I'd be willing if the other folks, uh, commissioners, would be willing to write a joint letter trying to get people back to the table and put public pressure on both sides to get to talking and, and to put some light on, on some of these issues of, of care. So I, I mean, I'd be willing to do that. Uh, Absolutely. I'll make that motion. Well, I think we need to uh, yeah. consider exactly what it is. We can look at the details. We can have a motion. I'm not, I'm not, uh, folks, I'm not opposing that. Mm -hmm. I, in fact, I said that initially that we would mm -hmm. take a look at that, mm -hmm. uh, and I still am willing to to uh, do that. But I I don't want to make a motion that says we're going to write a letter because the three of us need to agree on what is in that letter. Wouldn't you agree with that? No. Well, we can, or we can each write our own, and we can send it all in one envelope. But no, I'd I like think, to write one from the three I, of us. I, I think, but I think whatever, I think we one. should have a motion to write the letter, and we work out the details. Uh, once we have the motion, we can we can talk about it. We can't talk about it if it has to come to a vote. If we vote, then we can talk about it. That is the law. That is the sunshine law. Uh, uh, Commissioner, that you, I don't think you need to lecture me on the law. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I, I do uh, want to uh, uh, Penny, clarify just a few things. Uh, we did uh, do a lot of research and we visited three different nursing homes owned by three companies that made offers for Cedar Haven. We turned down an offer higher than CHR's offer and we did not sell the nursing home to Star Stone Boat, Barn Holdings or uh, Chaz Blaylock and we sold the nursing home to CHR who owns Lancaster counties and has a very good reputation there as we came to understand and they manage Berks County's nursing home and I know the commissioners in Berks County very well, and they recommended CHR, and we're very happy with CHR. So we did uh, do the right things and made the right decision and sold to the right company. Unfortunately, the man who owned CHR, Mike D'Arcangelo, committed to buy Cedar Haven, but if you'll recall, the closing was put off for two or three months during that process and he got himself in a financial situation where as I understand uh, Mr. Blaylock came in and was, had the money to carry Mike D'Arcangelo through the process and after the fact because he had that much money invested exerted force on, on uh, might be our danger. So that's the, the true scenario of what actually happened. So. I believe so. that Stone Barn was Stone Barn's name was on the actual paperwork for the sale. So Stone Barn's name was on the paperwork for the sale. The CHR only owned five percent. That other ninety-five percent was Stone It wasn't even CHR. It was Dark Angelo himself. Right. So before but the sale was finalized, there there was clearly another owner involved, mm -hmm. and there and was. The and that was the, that's our question: is did did you did you not ask where the ninety five percent stake was coming from? Because that's no, I don't think that was known before the sale. It had. I mean, it was on the table. I mean, I'm not saying board. that you no. knew exactly who it was. I'm saying you knew it wasn't his money. That he had a partner because nursing homes are not any old asset. Nursing homes are regulated. The ownership has to be public on the federal site, on the state. Like that stuff is all has to be transparent. So there, I mean, there has to be a moment in which, like, you know where the money is coming from. 
and the, uh, the gentleman who offered the higher bid, um, he, has, he bought another county home <laughs> around the area and is doing fantastic. <laughs> and we, have, and we have a collective so bargaining took the higher bid. So, so it's taking great care of his employees and his residents. And his residents. And here we are in a funk. But I do, I do want to want you to understand that we did uh, made appropriate decisions and had checked out CHR. In fact, Commissioner Litz suggested, and we use CHR to do the study, and that's how we ended up with CHR. So they, they came to us very well recommended, and that's who we made the sale to, to CHR. When we had the Vice President of Nursing and uh, we had some other folks from Cedar Haven with us on those visits, yeah. so that, that was all part of the... Uh, that was administration. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we had the yeah. President of the Union. But we, I mean, we yeah. have collective bargaining agreements with CHR in other parts of the state, and that's not who, right? We know that they are not the ones the that, can, that can deal with this situation, and, and you know, I think, I, I think that um, regardless, I think that, you know, the fact that there was, that, that it wasn't clear who exactly was going to control it until after the deal was done, I think, I mean, I think that is something that, you know, if, if, if other company, if other counties come to you guys and say, here's this guy, Chaz Blaylock, he wants to buy our nursing home, I mean, I think that that should be that's part of the facts, right? And I think that, um, you know, there is a pending litigation between CHR and Mr. Blaylock over what happened and they're being booted from the facility. It's filed in Montgomery County. It's pending. You know, okay. I encourage you to well, read the I, complaint. I, uh, I certainly appreciate that and, and certainly we would not have intentionally done anything that would create this situation. I'll, you know, I can certainly well, speak to that. And uh, yeah. I would uh, uh, entertain uh, Commissioner Litz. You already made a motion. <coughs> <that> they, <coughs> second. Uh, would uh, you clarify the language of the motion for me? The language of the motion is for the three commissioners to work out a letter with our administrator to send to Charles Blaylock and to, uh, I actually, I'd like to also include in that motion to um, notify the Department of Health on, on yes. behalf of the residents about what the testimony we heard here today. Okay. I'd be comfortable with that as well. Sure. And, and um, I was even thinking beyond that, too, if it could be uh, used as a letter to the editor uh, to put public pressure um, or, or, or some other way yes. of getting it out to the public uh, through the merchandise or the daily news or both. Yeah. Um, I would uh, amend the motion, uh, accept the amendment to the motion to also do a press release with the uh, letters. Was there an inclusion in there to fix the roof for Cedar Haven? Does anybody know? No, it wasn't that specific. No. Uh, no. No, it didn't itemize certain things about the building that were going to be done. In our defense for that, I mean, if you put $25 million to buy something, you would have, the assumption would be that those kind of things, would, they would have to protect them. The property. I mean, that's, so no, I, you can't get to that um, granular level. But I mean, you have to. <coughs> someone buys a house, you assume they're going to keep the roof, you know, good and that kind of thing. So I'm surprised that that would be neglected. But just like the residents. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you saying the roof is leaking? Pictures of the mold would be um, very helpful to send along uh, as another health concern to the department. Yeah. Problem is, like they said, once they call the state, it's like it's a, everybody's calling everybody. Let's go. Uh, the state's coming in here, and everybody. 
Oh, Mrs. So and so. Mm -mm. But Cheryl, it's that's why fake. I'm, that's what I think the public pressure of. of but that's the, what I'm saying. Of us, when they had called the state. Yeah, I'm just saying from local okay. pressure is what I think may. And I think that's great, but what I'm saying to you when the state has been called. Yeah. It's they give them an alert. Exactly. Yeah, there was even a 4F resident that made it out to us. We believe they did respond, but they're getting the heads up inside that they're coming. Right. So they have time to bring in extra people and, and, and make sure clean everything up. Everyone looks yeah. nice. I just like to yeah. say that you guys have been so brave um, to first of all, be out there, but also to come here today as organized as you are. Um, you've really made a very powerful presentation. You have gotten all three of us to agree to speak up on your behalf, and I commend you for that strength. Congratulations. Thank you. You know, well, I was at a meeting with you three with the broker before it was sold, and I know for a fact that the black mold was bought up for you people. And we had addressed it at that time, yeah. but if it's still leaking, did it come back? Was the but yeah, because it went all up about the black mold, and it will, if that would be taken care of. And we did. <laughs> oh, yeah. So this isn't something new to that. No, it's just about the black mold. It's been there for years. That was three years ago, so we got to yeah. we'll talk about now. Yeah, yeah. 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 that it was brought up. Residents' health, but also protected workers' health. Yeah. In the visitors. Yes. 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 I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. I did. And then all the residents' health, employees' health, but also our residents' health. Everybody's health. But they're cutting back on employees. Sick time, we're allowed to take. Every quarter, we're sick longer than that. And you know, mold is an issue, you know, would be an issue in that as well. Or like right now when they're all sick in there and yeah. quarantined. Well, your one or two days that you got for that quarter, they're probably gone because you probably got sick. All right. We do have a motion on the floor. So is there any other discussion appropriate to the motion because of the acting in our thing? We'll just get to work. The... Uh, the motion is that the, the three commissioners would uh, sit together and write a letter uh, appealing to Mr. Blaylock to come back to the table addressing the, the uh, care issues and the health issues that you're concerned with and we're concerned with as well. And to uh, also uh, make that letter so that it's of uh, multi-purpose it can, will go to Mr. Blaylock, it will go to the Department of Health, will be used as a press release, and uh, anyone else that uh, we find appropriate to send that letter to. So I have a motion and a second. All those in favor of the motion indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right. That letter will be written. Uh, Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. to meet with some folks from the union at 11. Are you still inclined to have those independent meetings with the commissioners? I was told it was 11.30, but... Um, oh, at 11.30 we can, do it, works. we can do it earlier. No, uh, whenever we're done here, uh, I'll be happy to do that. We'll come right back. We're going to go down and come right back. Okay. Right.